So hi, everybody, and thanks to our great moderator to give me an opportunity to talk about uh, our study. I just don't want to turn on my video, and for, you know, because for some reason, which I don't know, once I do that, then my Zoom will be stopped to work. So please excuse me. So basically, what I'm going to present uh, is a part of large project which uh, evaluate the durability and structural performance of concrete pipes with uh, graphite nanomaterials. As other already mentioned here, concrete pipes are susceptible to chemical and biogenic attacks, key elements to exp expedite concrete deterioration by corrosion. Effect is microorganisms exit in sewer environments, producing sulfuric acid to accelerate the degradation of concrete pipes in a process termed microbially induced corrosion. Uh, the primary solution for improving durability of concrete pipe against such aggressive condition were studied widely. So these methods include you use of different type of concrete mix design, sulfate-free aggregate, you know, new additive incorporating pozzolanic materials, fiber concrete kind of surface treatment, and a special curing methods, and etc. But progress in nanotechnology opens new new windows for concrete system to take advantage from it. In the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about the investigation and the effect of graphite nanoplatelet, uh, which uh, from now on I'm calling it uh, GNP, graphite nanoplatelet, on the durability of concrete in application of uh, sanitary sewer pipe. So concrete materials offer engineering properties like compressive strength moisture resistance and durability at low cost combined with energy saving and ecological advantages but concrete however lacks adequate toughness and impact resistance it could also benefit from improved barrier qualities exploratory research and the use of nanomaterials in cementitious paste has been undertaken in recent years we here at aci have uh, committees following this topic and i know that every convention we have sessions you know for following different aspects of this technology. Fundamental studies in this field have demonstrated the value of different graphite nanomaterials like carbon nanotube, carbon nanofiber, and graphite nanoplatelet in cementitious paste. The graphite nanomaterials considered in here in this study is GMP, graphite nanoplatelet. These relatively low cost graphite nanomaterials, which are produced at industrial scale right now, offer distinct geometric and performance advantages. So did these advantages are all are rooted in their nanoscale dimensions and substantially reduced structural imperfections when compared with conventional traditional carbon fiber, which comprise an imperfect arrangement, arrangement of graphene sheets. So graphite nanomaterials, when compared with uh, microscale fiber, traditional fiber offer distinctly high mechanical and physical attributes, as well as enormous surface area and very closely spacing if dispersed well within the matrix at relatively low volume of fraction in your concrete. Here in this presentation, benefit of modified GMPs used alone or in combination with PVA fiber to durability characteristics of concrete pipes were evaluated through industrial scale production and experimental evaluation of concrete pipes. So the relatively close spacing and high specific surface area of nanomaterials provide them with the potential to effectively control the flow size and propagation in cementitious paste. The close spacing of nanomaterials could also enhance the moisture barrier qualities and thus the durability characteristics of cementitious material by forcing tortuous diffusion paths of moisture into cementitious paste. As you can see from the top picture, and you can see that hot graphite nanomaterial, nanoplatelet hot graphite nanoplatelet forced external penetrant to pass longer away. And that way helps you know, the service life of our concrete. Combined use of nano and micro scale like hybrid reinforcement system in concrete could yield further improvements in concrete durability by control of crack growth at different scales. We have studied this synergistic micro nano reinforced hybrid system in concrete. And, you know, it's been presented and published and just don't want to get involved in this particular discussion more detail. So 
optimal bonding of graphite nanoplatelet to the matrix enables mobilization of exceptionally high tensile strain and the frictional resistance against the tremendous surface area of GMPs toward achievement of higher strand toughness levels. So the optimal bonding requirement can be met by careful surface modification of GMPs. Modified graphite nanoplatelet can play multi-phase role toward enhancing the mechanical, physical, and functional attributes of cementitious material. The surface modification also helps us disperse of you know to have a good dispersion of gmp in mixing water basically that is a kind of challenge de dealing with this type of materials the surface modification method used in this study involved grafting of polyacrylic acid paa on onto graphite nanoplatelet for introducing high concentration of hydroxyl and carboxyl groups on gmp surfaces uh, you know you can see that uh, from the right picture. So now these groups benefit the dispersion of nanoplatelet in water by making their surface more hydrophilic. The hydroxyl and carboxyl group also enables bonding to cement hydrates via a coordinate bond formation with calcium ions in cement hydrates, a strong cathodic and ionic interaction, and other secondary bondings. You know, all laboratory studies indicate that modification of GMPs with PAA at 1 to 0 0.1 GNP to PAA weight ratio enhance the contribution of GMP to the flexural strength of cementitious matrices. So the required amount of PAA was added to GMP per year to dispersion in water. So uh, graphite nanoplatelet uh, in this study were dispersed in 10% of the mixing water of concrete. So the Required amount of GMP was added to the water and the mix was stirred overnight like 12 hours and, and the mix was sonicated. You know, the, you know, this figure is a kind of uh, SEM image of a fractured surface of concrete, which is a fractured surface exactly then the, you know, the built pipe, which points at graphite nanopilletlet that are dispersed within cementitious matrix and seem to have bonded well to cement hydrates. Considering the high magnific magnification of this image, it provides an indication for the closest spacing of dispersed nanopilletlet in concrete. And the nanopilletlet seems to have pull out of matrix rather than ruptures. We also observe somewhere else, clustered group of nanopilletlet which are not really dispersed well within the cementation matrix. Given the low cementation binder content and low slump, almost zero slump for our case here for this study of concrete mix, in spite of the modification of nanoplatelet, they could not be truly dispersed within the concrete matrix using the industrial scale mixing procedure, which we used for our production. So, uh, so here is a short video which I took from on pipe manufacturer plant, Northern Concrete Pipe in Michigan. It shows how we added the prepared nanomaterial solution in the mixer using 10% of original mixing water. Basically, we took the 10% of the whole water off and then, you know, yeah, added this nanomaterial running all those methods for, you know, surface treatment and, you know, mixing them in our lab and then bring, you know, this bucket to the field. So, So yeah, yeah, the pipes were produced using a dry cast method, which employs the zero slum normal strength concrete that is consolidated using a combination of vibration and pressure. Concrete specimens, as you can see, were produced in the pipe production plant using the concrete materials and method of production, similar to those applied to concrete pipes. They are still cured following the procedure using the plant and then exposed to ambient temperature and 50% relative humidity per year to testing at 28 days of age. You know, these pipes had a diameter of 21 inch and length of eight foot. The nanopilatelet volume fraction was selected based on laboratory escape optimization program, which could balance the mechanical absorption gains of concrete mix. PVA fiber, which is distinguished by their high acid resistance was selected as a micro scale reinforcement. You know, a total of eight pipes were manufactured. You know, two of them 
was just plain concrete, two with GNP alone at the 0.05 volume percent of concrete nanomaterial dosage, and two with just PVA fiber at 0.8 volume percent of concrete. And the last two was including hybrid system, GMP and the PVA fiber. The GMP had a 0.05 volume percent of concrete and PVA fiber had a 0.8 volume percent of concrete. You know, after placement and consolidation under pressure, concrete pipe were subjected to steam curing at 60 degree over the 10 hours and were then subjected to ambient condition. If I want to give you an idea of what type of, you know, graphite nanomaterials we use, you know, the GMP we used uh, had a six to eight nanometer thickness and 25 micrometer planar dimension. And our PVA fiber length was like uh, half an inch with the diameter of 100 mm, micrometer. Okay. Okay. Samples were taken from concrete mixed batch and failed pipes, which were loaded under triage bearing test machine. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this, you know, I am presenting the durability aspect with regard to the MIC, but uh, we, we did a whole uh, full scale, you know, triage bearing test, see that how structurally this GMP helps concrete pipe. You know, absorptivity test was based on ACMC 1585 acid resistance test were performed on prismatic specimens using a modified version of ASTM C267. Concrete specimens were exposed to a 3% sulfuric acid solution at room temperature over a period of 90 days, like three months. The acid solution was replaced every 15 days after 90 days of exposure to acid attack. The specimens were washed to remove any loose particles and then tested in flexure. We also measured, hello? Yeah, you're still there, although okay. there's a lot of noise. Oh, so sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, and then we also measured the weight and thickness, see how much loss we had. You know, four-point flexure test, ASTMC78 were performed in age condition and after aging and after uh, acid sulfur attack on prismatic concrete specimen. Uh, here, I just uh, added, you know, absorptivity test result. For absorptivity test, the two series of samples were taken. The first one was from the mix before pouring the concrete in pipe mold, and the second series is cored from cured pipe. From the two top figures, moisture absorption rate shows the great effect of GMP in lowering absorption rate. You can see that. And the best is uh, fine dashed line which is belong to hybrid system, nano and microfiber together. So it looks that the planar geometry of GMPs and their closest spacing within concrete make them effective against the option of moisture and aggressive solution into concrete. So the closely spaced nanoplatelet force tortuous diffusion path into concrete, which significantly benefit the barrier qualities of concrete. This effect together with control of micro crack growth by nanoplatelet benefit the durability of durability characteristics of five characteristics of concrete nanocomposite in aggressive environment. Uh, okay, here uh, you know you, you can see the visual appearance of our samples before and after aging. The top two was just plain concrete. The left one was plain concrete without aging. The you know the right one was. Uh, after acid attack, 90 days at acid attack. And the four bottom shows our sample with this additive, with GMP, PVA, and hybrid system. It looks that uh, it realizes that with introduction of uh, graphite nanoplate lead, uh, and uh, you know it helps a little bit, and uh, to a lesser extent, PVA fiber may help. So these findings support the hypothesis that the contribution of GMPs toward moisture uh, barrier uh, qualities and micro crack resistance yield important benefits to the acid resistance of concrete. Here, you know, these are, you know, the measurements, weight loss for different samples, including different ingredients, and also measuring the thickness loss. It's, you know, as you can see, in the hybrid system works the best. And uh, uh, GMP also shows some promising uh, result. So, uh, flexural 
strength test results, on the other hand, highlighted the significant gains in uh, acid resistance of concrete realized with introduction of GMPs. So this also uh, helps, this shows that, you know, GMP could uh, affect the durability improvement of, you know, pipes and the concrete in, you know, acid environments. So to uh, make conclusion and to make the long story short, uh, graphite nanoplatelets at low dosage, 0.05 volume percent of concrete were found to significantly improve the moisture barrier at attributes and acid resistance of concrete without or with you know microfiber PVA fiber reinforcement. This improvement could be attributed to the tortuous diffusion path forced by the closely spaced nanoplatelets of planar geometry and also uh, to the micro crack RS quality of the closely spaced nanoplatelet with high specific surface area and desired interfacial bonding to cement hydrates. So I guess um, that's uh, uh, all my presentation. And uh, sorry if I was a little bit quick because I just want to save one, two minutes in case if, if there is any questions.